Writing test cases using Jira for a sign-up page of a gaming application. In today's video, specifically we will be focusing on writing test cases for a gaming application's sign-up page using the Jira tool. I have created a prototype template to guide you through this process step by step, making it easier for you to understand and implement in your own projects. Whether you are a seasoned tester or just starting out, this guide is designed to provide valuable insights into the process of creating effective test cases. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to write down around 38 test cases for the sign-up page by entering valid and invalid age ranges and submitting the form to test the behavior of the application. Next, I will test the birthday section frame of the application in order to see how the display options work and must appear correctly. Also, the leap year selection and the non-leap year selection, etc. I will write down the test cases for the username field following the criteria set for the username of the gaming application. I'll explain how to test the password field, creating the password as per the criteria set for creating the password. Lastly, I will test the gender section of the application, choosing the valid gender, leaving the field empty and much more. I am using Jira software by Atlassian. You see inside this tool, we can create our projects and I have installed Zephyr Scale, which is a test management tool. Inside Jira, I created a project using a scrum template from here. And then going to choose a team managed project. And I'm going to name my project as project seven as an example. Going to the next page in order to go to my project. Next from the apps, click on the Zephyr scale that is a test management tool that I have already installed. I am using the Zephyr skill in order to manage my test cases because this tool is specifically for managing test cases. Many companies also prefer to use this tool. You may google more about the features because in order to use this tool, we have to sign up for Jira and then install Zephyr skill. Now, as you see, I am inside my project and now I will create folders inside this project and name my folders related to the pages that I'm going to test for this application. So I'm naming it as sign up page, then home page, etc. As you see on this sign up page for the gaming application, there is a birthday section to test. Also, there is a username field, a password field and the gender selection section is there to test. And the gen Let's begin testing the birthday calendar for this gaming app as an example. In many applications, especially those with age restricted content like gaming applications, there is often a minimum and maximum age limit set for users who are signing up. This is to ensure that the users are within the appropriate age range to use the application responsibly and safely. This age criteria is typically enforced through the date of birth field in the registration registration form. When a user enters their date of birth, the application calculates their age and checks if it falls within the valid age range. If it does, the user can proceed with registration. If it doesn't, the user would typically see an error message informing them that they do not meet the age requirements for the application. Now for this prototype template, for example, if the minimum age to register is 9 years old and the maximum age limit is set to 113 years, then only users who are between 9 and 113 years old would be able to register for the application. Anyone younger than 9 years old or older than 113 years old would not meet the age criteria and would not be allowed to register. 
During the sign-up process, if a birth date is chosen that indicates the user is below the recommended age, the application may prompt for additional authorization or identification, such as an email ID from a parent or guardian. This step ensures that child's account is created with appropriate parental consent and supervision. To create a test case for this scenario, you can verify the expected result by entering an age that that is below the recommended age for the application. The expected result would be that the application requests additional authorization or identification from a parent or guardian before allowing the sign-up process to continue. This ensures compliance with legal requirements and provides an extra layer of protection for young users. It's important to note that the specific expected behavior may vary depending on the applications, designs, policies, and safety measures. It is always recommended to review the application's terms of service, privacy policy, and safety guidelines to understand their specific requirements for underage users. So we need to test the valid age and the invalid age. Age below 9 and above 113 should be the invalid test cases that we can create and then execute them. And the valid test case should be any age that comes in between 9 to 113, right? Here is how you may write the test case for an invalid age range. That is, to verify the application's response when an invalid age is entered in the birth field. Now, I am going to add my first test case in the sign up page folder. So, click on add new test case. So, for this, I am going to create a test case as verify sign up with a below age range. Example, age 3. So, when a user tries to sign up with an age below the minimum age limit, for example, age 3, the expected result should be that the application should display an error message indicating that the entered age does not meet the minimum age requirements for registration. Hence, the registration process should not be successful. But in case the application allows the user to register below the recommended age with their parental consent, then as soon as the user enters the age, the application prompts and asks the user for identification or verification such as entering their email ID in order to proceed with the registration process. So on entering their email ID, the next step is to verify the email ID that has been provided. The gaming application asks the user to verify the email by logging into their email and then clicking on the link that has been sent in order to verify. As soon as the link is verified by the parent or the guardian, the registration is successful and the account is being created. So, if your application supports this, then the expected behavior in this scenario would be as follows. As soon as the user enters the age that is below recommended, first, the application prompts the user to enter their email ID for verification. Second, the user enters their email ID and submits the form. Third, the application sends an email to the provided email address with a verification link. Fourth, the user logs in to their email account and clicks on the verification link. Fifth, the application verifies the link and confirms that the parent or the guardian has provided consent. Sixth, the registration process continues and the account is being created. Next, the test case is to verify sign up by entering an age that is above the age limit, for example, age 120. So, this is to verify the application's response when a user tries to sign up with an above age limit, for example, age 120. And this is an invalid test case as well. The expected result should be that on entering an age above the age limit and attempting to proceed, the application should display an error message indicating indicating that the entered age does not meet the maximum age requirements for registration. Hence, the registration process should not be successful. 
Next is to verify sign up with a valid age range. For example, choosing the age 9 or above 9, something in between the range that is any age like 16, 45 or 60 etc. And these are the valid test cases that we can create. The expected result should be that on entering an age within the valid range and attempting to proceed, the application should allow the registration process to be successful. So remember, it's important to be specific in your test steps and expected results to ensure that anyone executing the test case will know exactly what to do and what to expect. Also consider including a step to clear or reset the form after testing especially if you are running multiple tests in a row. Now we are going to check the display of options of the birthday selection frame of this gaming application, default value settings and the behavior of the selected day, month and year to each other. In other words, the selected options and their behavior with other fields. When you click on the arrow, the list of months should be displayed, right? So you will choose some valid month value or valid day value in order to test. And this test case should be a valid test case. For the automated drop-down selection for the month, day and year fields, these are some generic tests that we can do. First, check display of options. Second, check the selection of valid month, day or year. Third, Check the order of month, day or year. Fourth, check default value. Fifth, check behavior with other fields. So let's start first with the month field. So the test case, we will write it as verify by clicking on the month drop down field to check if the month displays correctly and is in the right order. And the expected result should be that the drop down should display all 12 months from January to December. Make sure to save the test cases every time you add a new test case. Next, check the selection of valid month. Test case, we will write it as verify by selecting a valid month from the drop down. For example, March. The expected result should be that the selected month should be displayed in the month field. Check order of month. For the test case, we will write it as verify the order of months in the drop down. The expected result should be that the months should be listed in chronological order from January to December. Let's also create a subfolder in order to keep the birthday section test cases separate to make it easy to understand if in case any other tester is going to execute these test cases. It should make it easy to understand. Click here on three dots known as more options, menu button or simply known as context menu. Then click on add subfolder. I'm naming my subfolder as a birthday section frame. As an example, I'm going to keep all the test cases that are related to this subfolder inside the sign up page. Simply click on the test case here and then go down below and choose the folder. As you see, I have chosen the sign up pages folder for the birth section frame and then added this test case into the specific folder. Similarly, go to each test case and keep them in their related folders and make sure to save each time you choose the folders. Check default value. Next, the test case is to verify the default value of the month field before any selection is made. The expected result should be that the default value should be appropriate. For example, select month or the current month, right? Check behavior with other fields. This test case is to verify after selecting a month, select a day and a year, then submit the form. The expected result should be that the form should accept the input and successfully submit if all other fields are also filled out correctly. So the test case, we will write it as verify after selecting a month, select a day and year and then submit the form. Remember, these are just example test cases. Depending on your application's requirements, you may need to add more test cases or modify these ones. Here are some test cases for the day field, which are also similar to the month field that I already explained. Check display of options, that is 
to verify by clicking on the date drop down field. The expected result should be that the drop down should display all valid day values that is from 1 to 31st. Check selection of valid day that is verify by selecting a valid day from the drop down for example 15. The expected result should be that the selected day should be displayed in the day field. Check order of days. This is to verify to check the order of days in the drop down. The expected result should be that the days should be listed in ascending order from 1st to 31st. Check default value. That is to verify to check the default value of the day field before any selection is made. The expected result should be that the default value should be appropriate. For example, select date is to check behavior with other fields. Verify after selecting a day, select a month and year, then submit the form. Expected result should be that the form should accept the input and successfully submit if all other fields are also filled out correctly. Here are some test cases for the year field similar to the month and the day field that I already explained. So let's quickly go through these. To check display of options, verify by clicking on the year drop down field. The expected result should be that the drop down should display a range of valid year values. Check the selection of valid year. Verify selecting a valid year from the drop down, for example, 2000. The expected result should be that the selected year should be displayed in the year field. Check the order of years. Verify to check the order of years in the drop down. The expected result should be that the years should be listed in descending order, for example, from 2023 to 1900. Check default value. Verify to check the default value of the year field before any selection is made. The expected result should be that the default value should be appropriate. For example, select year. Check behavior with other fields. Verify after selecting a year, select a month and day, then submit the form. The expected result should be that the form should accept the input and successfully submit if all other fields are also filled out correctly. Check leap year behavior. This test case is to verify by setting the year to a leap year. For example, 2024, the month to February and try to select 29 as the day. The expected result should be that the day 29 should be available for selection. Check non-leap year behavior. Verify setting the year to a non-leap year. For example, 2023 and the month to February and check if 29 is available as a day. The expected result should be that the day 29 should not be available for this selection. Remember, these are just example test cases. Depending on your application's requirements, you may need to add more test cases or modify these ones. Next is the username field. To test the username field, we first need to create a valid username for this application in order to sign up, right? So what is the valid username? Also, you see below it's mentioned not to use your real name. Since the username will be public, anyone can see or know your real name as a person. So in order to keep your personal information secure, anyone who is creating an account to play games on this application with unknown peoples need to keep their identity enclosed and hidden, right? This is recommended for the safety and security of the users when interacting with unknown people on the gaming application. The valid username should be anything, any fun names or shortcuts that are fun to use. As per the criteria set for the username, it requires users to create a username with at least four characters which should be unique and not in use by anyone else. So for this prototype template for the username, let's assume that the criteria set is that it must be at least four characters, must not start or end with any special characters like at the rate, underscore, hashtag, etc. Must only include characters like alphabets, numbers and only underscore. 
it should be unique this is to check if the chosen username is already in use by another user or not in order to prevent duplicate usernames i am now going to list out the test cases for the username field verify sign up by entering the valid username once you or any other user tries to sign up by creating a valid username by entering all other fields correctly the expected result should be that the sign up is successful and the account is being created the next test case is to verify sign up by entering the username that ends with a special character for example underscore the expected behavior is that as soon as the user enters an invalid username it shows an error that tells the user that the username cannot start or end with underscore or something like that. This is completely based on the application that you are going to test in real time work. So before you start testing, you need to go through the requirements thoroughly so that you know what to test and what to expect, right? The next test case is to verify sign up by entering username that has already been taken. The expected behavior is that as soon as the user tries to sign up with an already taken username, it must show an error that says that this username cannot be used as it has been already taken by someone else. It will automatically suggest the user to choose some other username. The next test case is to verify sign up by entering the username with a special character, for example, at the rate. As soon as you enter the username, the expected behavior should be that it shows an error that tells the user that the username may only contain letters, numbers, and underscore. The next test case is to verify sign up by entering the username that is too long, for example, gaming123456. 7899008876544 etc the expected behavior is that as soon as the user enters an invalid username that is a too long username it shows an error that tells the user that the username is too long it also suggests that the username can be 3 to 20 characters long now again this is completely based on the application that you are going to test in real time work so before you start testing you need to go through the requirements thoroughly so that you know what to test and what to expect right the next test case is to verify sign up by entering the username that has only numeric characters for example one two three four five the expected behavior is that as soon as the user enters an invalid username that is entering only numbers it shows an error that tells the user that the username cannot be just numbers or it may say the username is not an appropriate username or invalid username please enter a valid username to sign up gaming applications generally have rules against offensive language including usernames this includes avoiding language that is vulgar discriminatory or otherwise inappropriate the next test case is to verify sign up using the inappropriate username and see if the system rejects that or not the expected behavior should be that on entering an inappropriate username that violates the rules of the application, the system should immediately identify that the username is inappropriate. A message should be displayed to the user indicating that the username is not appropriate and asking them to enter a valid username. The sign up process should not proceed until a valid username is entered. Or we can create reserved words. This means to block the use of reserved words or inappropriate terms in usernames to maintain a safe and respectful environment. For this, you may write the test case scenario as verify to identify reserved words. Create a list of reserved words or inappropriate terms that should not be allowed as usernames. These words can include offensive language, slurs, or any other terms that are not suitable for the application's 
environment. This test case checks if the gaming application effectively enforces its rules about using appropriate language in user names. This contributes to creating a gaming environment that is respectful and inclusive. It's always important to consider such aspects when testing a gaming application. Another test case is to check if users can change their usernames in the gaming application. Some games let you change your username if you want a new identity. But this is often controlled for a few reasons. The first reason is identity. Since your username is your identity in the game, changing it often might confuse other players who know you by your old username. Second is safety. Limiting how often you can change your username can prevent misuse like pretending to be someone else or trying to get away from a bad reputation. Third is the technical reason. Managing frequent changes could be technically challenging. Because of these reasons, games often have rules about changing usernames. They might ask for a fee or limit how many times you can change your username. This makes players think twice before they decide to change their usernames. So the test case or the test scenario, we will write it as verify signing up with a valid username and then changing the username a few times and see if the system lets users change their username following any rules or restrictions set by the application. Now to test the password field, we will do some valid tests and invalid tests and see the behavior of the application and whether it meets the requirements as expected or not. So let's start testing this field by entering a valid password. So we will write the test case as verify sign up by entering a valid password. Once the user creates a valid password that meets the criteria set for the password field, the expected behavior should be that the password should be accepted and the sign up must be successful. Next, verify sign up by leaving the password field empty. This is to verify the behavior when the password field is left empty is an important step in ensuring the robustness and security of the gaming applications. By conducting this test, you can check if the application handles empty password fields correctly and provides appropriate feedback to the user. So the expected result should be that the system must show an error saying that the password field cannot be left empty. Please enter your password in order to sign up and then proceed. Let's assume that the criteria set up for the password that requires users to create a password with at least 8 characters including at least one symbol or sign, one numeric character, one uppercase letter and one lowercase letter. If a user enters a password that is too short, it will show an error message indicating that the password must be at least 8 characters long. The error message should also recommend using a combination of mixed characters to create a strong password. The next test case is to verify sign up using a very short password. This is an important test case to ensure that the application enforces the required criteria for password creation and security. If the developer has set specific criteria for password creation such as minimum length, required symbols or signs and numeric characters, then users must create a password that meets these criteria in order to sign up for the application. The other invalid test case for the password field is that verify sign up using a too long password that is more than 8 characters or just enter 9 characters instead of 8 and test the field. The expected result should be that the password is not accepted. It shows an error which says please enter a valid password. The password must be at least 8 characters long in order to sign up for the application. Next, verify sign up by entering the password without using any uppercase letters. Once the user tries to create a password without using any uppercase letters, the sign up is not successful. It shows an error saying that the password must include at least one uppercase letter. Hence, in order to sign up, please enter a valid password. For example, ABC at the rate 1234. Here you see there is no uppercase letter, hence it is an invalid password. Similarly, verify sign up by entering the password without using any lowercase letters. For example, abc at the rate 1234. Now, 
if the user tries to create a password without using any lowercase letters, the signup is not successful. It shows an error saying that the password must include at least one lowercase letter. Hence, in order to sign up, please enter a valid password. Verify sign up by entering a password with only numbers. For example, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So in this case, if the user tries to sign up using just numbers, that is numeric characters, then the expected result should be that it must show an error that says only numeric characters are not accepted. Please enter a valid password in order to sign up. It recommends creating the password within the criteria set for the password. Verify sign up by entering a password without using any special characters, that is, without using any symbol or a sign in it. For example, ABCD1234. In this case, when the user tries to sign up using a password that does not include any special characters like at the rate, dollar, hashtag, exclamation mark, etc., then the expected result should be that it must show an error saying that the password must include a special character in it. Hence, the password is not accepted. It recommends creating a valid password that meets the criteria set for creating the password. Let's move on to the gender section of the page. For writing the test cases for the gender section, I am creating another subfolder inside the sign up page just like I did for the birthday section frame so that it is easy to distribute the test cases without any confusion. Simply click on the three dots in front of the sign up page. Then add a subfolder. I am naming it as a gender section test cases and then saving it. Now we are done creating our subfolder. On clicking on it, you see it's empty now. Next, add a new test case from here. Following are some test cases related to the gender section of this prototype gaming application that I have created as an example. You can further customize them based on your specific requirements and the application's design. So the test case for this prototype template we write as verify sign up by entering valid input such as selecting male or female. Ensure that the application accepts and saves the selected gender correctly. But if in case the application supports selecting multiple genders, then you must verify that the application displays an error message and prompts the user to select a single gender before submitting the form. So in this case, we write the test case as verify sign up by selecting multiple genders. The next test case is to verify sign up by leaving the gender field empty. Once the user submits the form by leaving the gender field empty and by entering all other data correctly, the expected result should be that the application should display an error message indicating that the gender field is required. Also, it prompts the user to enter a valid gender selection and the sign up process should not proceed until a valid gender selection is made. After I saved the test case, now coming down below to the folders just to check if the test cases are in the right folders. The gender section folder that I have created. Once you click on the specific folders, you may see the test cases that are saved inside the related folders. You see I have two test cases saved in my gender section folder inside the sign up page folder, right? Similarly, when you click on other folders, you will see all the test cases that are being saved and will be executed later on by you as a tester or by some other test. There are a few more tests based on the accessibility, localization and performance of the gaming applications that are required to be checked and done for quality testing. Let's quickly go through these. Verify localization of the application. If your gaming application supports multiple languages, test the gender section with different language settings. Verify that the translated gender options are displayed correctly and that the application handles gender selection appropriately in each language. Verify accessibility or check usability of the signup page. 
test if the section where users pick their gender is easy to use with tools like screen readers or just a keyboard. Make sure users can easily move around and pick a gender option using these tools. Verify performance or check speed. If picking a gender in the game involves any complicated tasks or getting data, test how fast it works by pretending lots of users are picking different genders at the same time. See how long it takes to respond and how much computer power it uses to make sure that the game can handle lots of people playing at once without slowing down. Lastly, you must verify the testing sign up page in landscape mode. This test is done because some applications have rotatory functionality, especially mobile apps have rotatory functionality. That's why this test should be done. These are some test cases that I think are important to test, but these are not the only test cases, I must say. There are no limits to testing and you must test the application in every possible way as you can, depending on time and the type of the project. I will continue testing this same gaming application in my next upcoming video. I will show you how to write the test steps or the test scripts for all of these 38 test cases. Like, share and subscribe. Press the bell icon to get notified of my new uploads. Thank you for watching.